Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video, it's collaboration time. I had the great pleasure this winter of collaborating with Russell from Russell's Astrophotography. He's a UK-based astrophotographer and YouTuber. So I've admired his videos for quite some time, his images, We've chatted a bit about vlogging equipment and of course astrophotography as well. Uh, but I had never done a collaboration like this. It's something I've always wanted to do. And he's done several. So he was able to uh, kind of show me the ropes a little bit, how to plan it effectively and really make it happen. So it was exciting to uh, just dive right in and go for it. As we'll talk about in our video chat, we chose this particular region and uh, framed it up and everything, and then went ahead with the imaging. Now he's based in the UK, and of course I'm here in Chicago. So it's not quite the Event Horizon Telescope or Gemini North and South or anything like that, but pretty cool. What a great hobby that we're able to get two telescopes on different continents and take an image and combine that data of the same object. So for my end of the imaging, I was able to use the Rasa 8 telescope as well as my standard ASI 1600mm Pro camera. For the filter, I was using the 3.5 nanometer f2 high speed narrowband filter in the hydrogen alpha wavelength from Botter Planetarium. I was actually only able to get enough clear nights in order to do uh, just about four and a half hours of hydrogen alpha imaging, but combine that at f2 speed with the data that Russell got. It was uh, quite a good result, as you will see. Now, I'm excited to get to this video chat, but before I do, make sure you're subscribed to Windy City Astrophotography. And also, after you watch this video here, make sure you go over and watch it on Russell's channel as well. He's going to have a little bit of information on his imaging setup. And after you watch the video there, make sure you give it a like and also subscribe to his channel as well. All right, enough chatting on my end. Let's get to the video chat with Russell. Here we have the Cone Nebula collaboration. Hi, Nick. How are you? How's things? Great, how are you, Russell? Good to see you. Yeah, really good, thanks. I love your background, by the way. That's uh, oh, really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the uh, Rasa 8 behind me. It is uh, actually there. It's not a virtual background. Yeah, that's right. Uh, nice. But uh, yours, you got the, uh, the California Nebula? Yes, right? yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, Gorgeous. nice uh, starless image. <laughs> uh, hey, that's a good way to go, I think. <laughs> I almost did that for the one we're about to look at, but yes, yeah. spoiler alert, I put the stars back in. <laughs> so how did you um how did you get on with the uh the data you um you happy with what you you edited definitely yeah i um my contribution was uh what it could be uh for the cone nebula region uh it was a very cloudy winter usually in <laughs> chicago it's it's definitely cloudy in the winter but this one was particularly uh, uh rough few and far between on yeah. the nights you did so i was happy for the f2 speed so for what i got it was uh really quite excellent um, and then uh, with your data, the O3 especially was just fantastic. Um, O3 in Chicago can be a little, a little shaky. Uh, you need a lot more integration, but uh, with yours, just fantastic. So it was yeah. able to, uh, yeah, it was a, a kind of a joy to work with this data. There was uh, very yeah. little noise, especially in the hydrogen alpha. Yeah, it's always nice when you have a lot of data to work with. I think it just makes the edit exactly. so much nicer. Yeah. But... Yeah, well, um, do you want to say a bit about then why we chose this target? Because I know it was your your decision to go for the cone nebula and the, the framing sure. that we went, went with as well, because um, that was kind of on you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we uh, we kind of went back and forth on a few objects uh, based on latitude differences and things like that, and uh, you know what, what kind of clear skies we'd have in different directions. Cone nebula is what we we went for, and I kind of like it because of the there's sort of three different uh, parts of it or three different types of objects in it. You've got the stars that are there. None of them are too bright, which is nice, uh, but there's some nice little clusters and things. And then there's this great uh, sort of structure to the nebula with the cone nebula, obviously. And then you've got this, this dark area of dark nebulosity and some bright nebula inside of it. And then across the entire thing, it's, it's less structure, but it's more kind of a texture in the, the hydrogen alpha clouds. And I, I just think it's fantastic. It's a, a kind of an interesting uh, processing challenge to bring out all three of those and kind of balance um, what you're doing with all of them. So I thought it'd be a good challenge. And as far as the framing went, yeah, that, that one kind of mountain of dark nebulosity yeah. with the a pocket of bright nebulosity inside of it. I often see that not included in the frame. People tend to kind of center the Christmas tree, tree cluster and the cone nebula in the center and lose that little bit. So I thought, okay, if we can just kind of crop it over and kind of look at the region as a whole, that'd be, uh, it'd be a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and I think that that works really well because, yeah, like you said, you do see that the cone nebula slap bang in the middle of quite a lot of the frames, but there's yeah. so much going on around it. And I just, yeah, I just love the framing. 
So yeah, I'm really excited to see what you've uh, done with the data. Do you want to share your image first? Sure, absolutely. All right, so here is my final image. Nice, that looks really good. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah went for a standard SHO processing, and uh, I guess we can show the kind of the original channels. Yes, uh, you were. Kind enough to put these together in APP, yep. uh, combining our both of our HA data and then uh, URS2 and O3 data. Yeah. And yeah, nice and clean, especially the HA. I mean, that is, yeah, very clean. <laughs> it's so easy to work with. And I think and it's about, is it about 20, 21 hours in total for? Yeah, I think the, that's about what we had. We'll have to get the, the few, yeah. official uh, tally yeah. migration. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, my initial combination looked like this. Obviously, the magenta stars and everything. Yep. And then I, uh, yeah, through uh, color masking, um, I went with a starless image here and then was able to move through to less green and more of the orange and the blue color um, to something a little bit more like this. Yeah. And just... then I did a I flipped the orientation a little bit. Um, We'll see which one you chose, um, uh, but I ended up going um, for a vertical view, just kind of the, I don't know, I kind of like the darkness down at the bottom and the light up at the top. Yeah. Um, this whole region kind of looks good, though, from kind of any orientation. So <laughs> yeah. I uh, think it works, whichever. You know, know, maybe I'll change my <laughs> mind at some point on this. But then, uh, yeah, then we had the, the final and then a, an annotated view with a few of the objects that are, yeah, that looks uh, really good. That are identified here. So yeah, I was uh, quite happy with it. That O3 data that you had, I didn't have to boost that at all. Oftentimes, you know, a lot it depends on the on the object, right? There may not be a lot of O3 signals, so you have to boost it and bring it out quite a bit. But this one is fairly strong to begin with, and your data was fantastic. And I just I just kind of let it sit there, and uh, it mixed really well with the uh, the S. Yeah, I think you I think you've edited it really really well. I love it. Um, and what the, the stars you you put back in? Yeah, they're the uh, the hydrogen alpha stars. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a little, a little bit. Uh, they're not bland, but you know, it's just white. There's yeah. no uh, no color data to them. But then again, it's narrowband imaging, so I don't feel too bad. That's the but, the uh, same approach that I take as well. I put the uh, the HA yeah. stars back in at the end. So, yeah, yeah. I think it looks great. The, uh, really good. The star list looks really nice. Yeah. I, mean, I thought. <laughs> Maybe we'll stick with that. But. I know they're they're quite anyway. controversial, aren't they? The starless images, but I absolutely yeah. Love them. I, uh, I I yeah. yeah. We don't want to start any fights <laughs> online. But, uh, yeah, it's gosh. Sometimes it looks so nice. So um, yeah. So that was a uh, that was it my looks approach. Great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Cool. Well, I'll show I'll show you what I went for then. Um, yeah. All right. Let me load this up. Okay. Wow. So this is uh, this is my final uh, image. And I went for oh, something um, a little bit different to my normal editing uh, style. Yeah. yeah, so I followed um, Steve's approach for, um, on the channel Entering Into Space, and he wow. recently did a tutorial on uh, tone mapping or color mapping. Um, hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. And this was the first image I've ever edited in Photoshop. So I didn't use Pick Insight um, that much for this image. I basically did all of the steps um, in Photoshop. So. I will load Photoshop and I'll show you the, the approach that I took. Um, so this is kind of the approach I took. So this was the initial um, combination, the SHO combination. So this is just combining the, the three channels. Um, and then what I did was um, followed his approach of trying to balance the histogram. So by using, um, by using adjustments, if I click on one of the layers, um, so by using levels adjustments, you can select the RGB channels, and then you can try and balance them out so that the histograms line up. Um, so that's essentially what I did. And I started by selecting a certain region of the the, uh, the image. Um, I started by selecting the, the highest signal region, um, and then lining up as best I could the, the histograms for each of these selections. So I'll show you kind of the, the selections I made and how it like impacts the, the image as we go. So this was the first um, change I made. So I selected the highest um, region and then altered the outside. 
Um, then I actually altered the, the the highest signal region as well, so the cone nebula and this this section of the image. Um, and then I just kept on selecting different parts of the uh, the image until I actually had edited um, the whole image itself. And each time, just using the image adjustment, the levels to line up the histograms. And as you can see, the histograms are getting more and more lined up as we go through this. Um, and it just brings out a lot more of that color depth. Um, and yeah, hopefully just uh, adds quite a bit of uh, interest and a bit of, bit of color to, to the image. So a completely different approach that I would normally take. Um, once I got to this stage, I then added in another um, layer, which was the hydrogen alpha layer. So I used that as, as sort of a luminance layer um, to add in a little bit more detail to smooth out some wow. of that noise in the image. So um, yeah. you can see it's quite noisy at the moment when I was just working on the colors. But when I added in that hydrogen alpha layer, it just, uh, just cleaned it up and got rid of quite a lot of that noise. So a completely Incredible. different approach. Um, and it's just yeah. all about, I, I, Steve does a much better job at um, going through, he did an absolutely brilliant tutorial. Um, so I will link to that in the, the description below, but I, I think it works quite well. And yeah, just uh, completely different wow. to what I would normally do. Yeah. Um, but I, thought I I'd love give it that. Again. Yeah, it's unlike anything I've seen you do before. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a prism of color across the whole thing. It's really fantastic. Yeah, and it's- um, I also do the hydrogen alpha luminance layer. Do you, do you do any noise reduction prior to that? Do you just kind of let the colors be as noisy as you want? Or do you- um, No, so, so um, on this, between this layer, so I don't know whether you can see it clearly on here, but between these two layers, I did do a little bit of noise, um, of noise yeah. reduction. So you might be able to just about- yeah just about to see yeah. it. So I did a bit of noise reduction huh. and then I added in the the um gotcha. yeah the H, the HA layer. Um and then yeah. like you oh. I added in the um the hydrogen alpha stars um to mm -hmm. uh, just to put the stars yeah. back in. I, I I'm gonna keep this uh the this starless image as well <laughs> because I yeah. do love the do love the starless <laughs> Put image. that one for your wall. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> so amazing. yeah that's that's the the approach that I took. Oh, I love that. I love that. Two completely separate approaches, same data. Um, it's fantastic. I'm yeah. glad. I was going into this like, I don't know, maybe we both went with, uh, you know, kind of the blue and gold. It'll be, they'll look different, right? It's never going to be exactly the yes, same. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but that's a wow, the great thing about Astro. You cool. can kind of edit it in so many different ways, so many different color palettes. Yeah. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah. yeah, especially narrow bands. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can really do whatever you want. And we had so and much... really, I mean, I think this was, it was such a great, collaboration to have to know that even on cloudy nights you were getting data that I could then <laughs> play around with which yeah. is fantastic but also I mean just this idea that we could over several months image in two completely different parts of the world yeah. and then put that data together and then manipulate it and come up with two you know certainly nice to look at but completely different images <laughs> yeah it's a I don't know it's just a cool hobby it was, yeah. it was great fun I really enjoyed yeah. it and uh We'll have to so see what's which. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to plan another one. Definitely. Yeah, okay. find one. Definitely. Yeah. Once you've got some uh, real dark skies returning, yes. maybe at the end of the summer. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got some short yeah, nights. Yeah, some band then. So, yeah, and we'll have to see which uh, which people prefer. That's true. Yeah, yeah I guess we got to vote. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. See. I think I like yours better than mine. But, oh, I don't uh, know. I like yours yeah. as well. Your edit's yeah. great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, well thanks, thanks Russell. This is fantastic. Yeah, no, it was really good fun. Thanks. We'll have to do it again soon. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Cheers. So there you have it. Two totally different images from the same data. It's pretty exciting stuff and amazing to see his result as well. I was definitely looking forward to that. It was a great project to do over the winter. It took a little bit longer than expected just to finally get all that data put together, find times to uh, record with our busy schedules and everything. But I'm really excited to get these images out there and uh, see what you think as well. So now go check out Russell's channel and his video as well. I'll put a link to those in the description below. I'll also be releasing here on this channel a little bit more of an in-depth look at the data processing that I did in PixInsight for this Cone Nebula image. So look for that. A little bit of a walkthrough, a little bit of a tutorial on some of the steps that I took in order to get that final image. Now definitely also go check out Steve's channel that's entering into space. He's got a lot of excellent processing tips 
and uh, follow along video tutorials in there for uh, Photoshop and PixInsight. In fact, I'm going to go check out that tone mapping video, which I have had saved in my watch later list for a few weeks now. So I'm going to go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, clear skies, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.